Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're making an awesome egg sinker mold. And like I already told you, it's gonna be awesome. So stick around. Most sinker molds are made out of aluminum and the two sinker mold DIYs I did on my channel was made out of aluminum also. Any DIY sinker mold you make, you can make it out of wood as well. And a lot of people like to, but I like to make mine out of aluminum because one, aluminum cools down faster. Two, aluminum is a lot tougher so it's gonna last a lot longer. This mold here is a cannonball mold. Once you stick your ring in there, fill up this cavity with lead, and when you're done, you got a cannonball sinker. That looks pretty awesome. Now, the other type sinker mold that you have, it's also made of aluminum. It has a pore cavity. It has the cavity for the sinker, but on this one, it has a shaft here and a shaft here. These sinker molds work really good too, and you just line it up with the shaft and the holes, and when you put it together, it keeps everything straight for you. Well, we're gonna make a sinker mold like this one, but we're gonna make it for egg sinkers, which is probably the most popular sinker on the market. Every time I make a video and I use aluminum in it, people are always like, where'd you get your material? This is where I get my aluminum at the scrapyard, and I buy it for scrap price. I don't buy new stuff because aluminum is high. But on today's video, the material I used came from Race City Steel, and that's in Denver, North Carolina. And also, I'm not sponsored by them. This is DJ, this is where I buy my metal. What's going on? DJ from Race City Steel, come see us. So if you need some metal, Ray City Steel, if you're in my area. It's actually a great place to get materials, but I will warn you, they're a little bit high, but they're very friendly, they're very helpful. And if you go in there and ask, they'll let you go to the back and you can buy something that they call drops. What drops are is leftovers from pieces they've cut and they sell them a little bit cheaper. What I went and bought is three quarter inch by one and a half inch wide. I bought two foot of it and two foot of it was like $14. That is a little on the high side, but it's not that expensive because today I'm only gonna use about eight inches of this, which is probably $5 worth of aluminum. So the first step to this mold, I'm gonna cut two three inch pieces off of my aluminum. You know those picks you get at Arbor Freight? I think you get a set of them for like 350. Well, I sacrificed one of those picks. They're made of stainless steel and it's the right size. So next we're gonna have to drill our holes to put our pins in. And what I did is on my drill press, you're gonna need a straight edge. So I clamped a piece of aluminum. But now when you put your part in there, it's gonna always come to center and that's just gonna make things easier. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm gonna drill completely through the top plate and only partially through the second plate. But we're gonna have to drill through this top plate first. I'm using a 1364 drill bit because it's the same exact size as my shaft. But on the bottom plate, I'm gonna use one size bigger. Okay, so we got our bottom holes drilled a little over halfway through. We got our top holes drilled all the way through. This was just the easiest way to do it. And the reason we switched drill bits, this is our shaft. See how tight it is on the top one? We're actually gonna have to press it in there. But on the bottom plate, it slides right in. And that's what's gonna give it the effect like this one has. Or when you put it together, it don't move. But anyway, the next step is to put these shafts in our top one. If you don't have a press, then you can probably use a big hammer and tap it in. Okay, now I got my shafts in. I just knocked them down flush with the top. When you hit them with the hammer, you may mushroom the ends a little bit, so you might have to sand the tips of these shafts off. My next step is going to be to chamfer these holes because if you can see right there, these holes have a chamfer in them. It just lets that pin slide in a little bit easier. Put a chamfer on a hole, you can use a bigger drill bit or you can use some of these countersinks. These countersinks also work as deburr tools. So 
So now we got our sieves in. Now we got our holes chamfered. And our top plate slides right into our bottom plate. And it doesn't have no plate. So next we can start cutting our cavities for our sinkers. So the first part we're going to have to work on is that hole in the center of the sinker. We have to have something for that. They sell these little rods and they're four sinker molds and they're not that high. I've seen people use spokes on a bicycle rim and it works really good because it's about the same size as this. I have some of these so I'm gonna use them but make sure it's thick enough to get any size line through. Drilling through thick pieces of aluminum is not easy, so you might want to stop and clean your drill bit every once in a while and use a little cutting fluid. That'll help too. WD-40 works really good on aluminum as well. <music> little holes ain't easy to drill in thick aluminum. Telling you what. I broke my drill bit off, so now I'm going to have to get that out of there. Well, that wasn't easy, but now I can get the drill bit out. Well, I broke my drill bit off. I probably ain't getting that out of there too easy. So I'm just gonna make this piece over again. I am, however, gonna knock these pins out and reuse them over. Now we're back to where we were and we're ready to drill our pin hole again, you know, for our pin. Well, I was using the 332nd inch, and since it kind of burned up and got it on me and messed up, I went and bought me a bunch of them because they're not that high, and these are actually better than what I was using, which are the Harbor Freight drill bits. And they're going to be using WD-40 because I've used WD-40 on aluminum before, and it seems to work better than cutting fluid. <laughs> I drilled the top piece first and then I used it to get the bottom holes lined up. Now I'm going to clamp both pieces back together and I'm going to run the drill bit all the way through both of them real slow to make sure everything's good and straight. Well, we got all our holes lined up right. You see how they lined up right? That's what we want. Next, we're going to have to start drilling the shape of our sinker and we're doing an egg sinker. Now the good part about this next step is we ain't using them tiny little drill bits that gonna keep breaking on us. On the next step, the first drill bit you're gonna need is a quarter inch drill bit. The purpose of the quarter inch hole, now you notice how these little holes kinda line up the big ones. When you're drilling it, don't hold it real tight. Let the drill bit line itself up with that little hole in there. I basically drilled the quarter inch holes just as a little lead hole for our next drill bit. Now, one of these holes, I'm gonna take a half inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill down about a half an inch on each side. So I took a piece of scotch brite and I cleaned those holes out after I was done. Now these two holes are shaped like a drill bit. On this next hole, I'm going to use a round ball end mill. Now you can get round ball end mills on Amazon and offline. And sometimes you can find a pretty good price on them. But if you get a good one, it's going to be kind of expensive. And I really want to see what the difference is in the looks of them. So this side's going to be the drill bit. And this other side is going to be drilled out with a round ball end mill. So now we got our hole drilled out with our round ball mill and we got our hole drilled out with our drill bit. Next, I marked off of these pin holes, brought it all the way around to the top and I took a punch and made a mark right here 
We're going to drill a quarter inch hole here and a quarter inch hole here. So I drilled down until I'm almost through into the mold. And now I'm going to switch to a smaller drill bit. Poke on through it. Because that's your clip point. You know where you like clip it off at. So I'm going to try it and hopefully it'll work. Okay, so we got our pour holes drilled, and it's kind of like our example. It had a wide pour hole. You want it wider so you can hit it easier, but it kind of necks down as it goes in. You can see what I'm talking about right here. It necks down until it gets to the sinker, and the reason I wanted this part smaller is so I could clip it off. Now, there's only one more hole we need to drill. Everything's finished. We're going to drill back through our pin holes because doing all this work kind of stopped them up and it don't want to go in now. So we're just going to run a drill bit through it to clean everything out of it. Okay, so I cleaned this thing up with a sander a little bit. Now all we got to do is pour our sinkers. And I want to tell you something before we start. This might not be the size sinker you need, but you can use the same exact method to make bigger sinkers. You only had to do two things to make them bigger. Use a bigger diameter drill bit or drill the holes deeper and make them a little bit longer. Either one will give you heavier sinkers. But anyway, we about to pour these and see what they look like. Look, if you're going to pour lead, then you need your PPE on. You always need to wear PPE when pouring lead. Get you a good respirator. Next, you're going to need some safety glasses. And you're probably going to need to wear a weld coat. What the crap? Next, make sure you got some good gloves. Now, safety glasses protect your eyes, but they don't protect your face. So get you a weld helmet. Now we're ready. Dang it. If you don't want to buy something like this, you can use a regular pot, get a burner and put it on it. Or you can buy one of these cast iron ladles they sell. You can throw some lead in it and heat it with a blowtorch. Now you're gonna have to always heat up your mold before pouring. And if you have a piece of aluminum or something, you can set it on top of your pot. So I can set my mold on my aluminum and let it heat up some. Or you can get you a blowtorch and you can heat it up that way too. So this little part that it leaves over, and what I mean is your poor hole part, you can just clip it off with a pair of dikes. And after you clip it off, you just throw it back in your lid. And when you're done, this is what you end up with. And you can kind of see the difference. This is a sinker that was made with just a drill bit. I mean, it don't look that bad. This is the sinker that was made with the round ball end mill. And it looks a lot like a regular egg sinker. It's kind of cool. This here project turned out really cool. I mean, it wasn't that hard. It just takes a little patience, that's all. That sinker mold turned out awesome. I really do like it. I really do. And I can see me using this for a long time in a lot of different ways. It was an awesome DIY. And if you like DIYs, go over and check out my channel page. 
I got a long list of DIYs I'll help you save money. If you find something that you like, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next build.